I'm making a video on my Blu-ray collection. Just in case, you know, y'all wonder what kind of movies I own, which some people do. So, let's get started. Alright, first up, we got 12 Years a Slave. Uh, I mean, it's a great movie. Uh, Chewy Tell gives a great performance. Michael Fassbender is good. Lupita Nyong'o. I mean, everybody was good in this movie. It was directed great. It's just a good movie to own on Blu-ray. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. 2001 A Space Odyssey. This is one of my favorite films of all time. For seriously, uh, Stanley Kubrick obviously directed this movie. Kubrick really had a vision for this movie and he really executed it the way he wanted it to be. And, I mean, this is still like one of the most studied movies of all time. And this movie was made like in 1965, I think it was in production in 1965, it came out in 1968 I believe. Um, the effects in this movie are outstanding. I mean, you can show me a movie in 1999 or even early 2000s, and this movie would still look better than the effects that came out in that time. Alright, up next we got 21 Jump Street uh, with Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill. This movie's hilarious. I mean, it, I laugh every single time. There's not a bad time to watch this movie. Every time you put this movie in, you are guaranteed to laugh constantly. Chemistry between Jonah Hill and uh, Channing Tatum is fantastic. Haven't checked it out yet? Check it out. And also check out 22 Jump Street if you haven't seen that. Oh, and uh, shout out to uh, Griffey for showing me this. He begged me to watch this movie for a very long time, and I like refused, and then I finally just gave in and watched it, and it was fantastic. So, thank you, Griffey. All right, now we got uh, 30 minutes or less. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg, Aziz Ansari, Danny McBride, and Nick Schwartzen. The guy that directed Zombieland also directed this movie. You know, a lot of people had problems with this movie, talking about the writing wasn't there and it wasn't funny and it was unrealistic and all that. Uh, I didn't have that problem. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was funny, like, didn't really skip a beat. I mean, I guess I can tell, you know, some people having problems with the writing here and there, but uh, I liked it. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Now we got Akira. This movie is fantastic. I mean, this film is, it's like the 2001 Space Odyssey of anime films. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. It really, the movie's almost two hours long. I think it is two hours long. And everything in the movie is drawn by hand. And it's so detailed. Every single part of this movie is detailed. And when you're watching it, there's like not one spot that isn't detailed. And um, yeah, it's, it's a great anime movie. If you're a fan of anime and you haven't seen this movie, you need to get on that. All right, now we got Alien. Uh, directed by Ridley Scott. This movie is also awesome. I love this movie. Um, you know, I'm going to bring out this. I'm waste my time. We got both Alien and Aliens. Uh, both great movies. Alien is kind of different. I mean, it's more of a sci fi, psychological, uh, claustrophobic, um, eerie movie. Um, and Aliens, uh, with a different director, James Cameron directed this one. It's more of like an action flick, like a sci-fi action flick, but it holds up very well. Great, great performance by Sig uh, Sigourney Weaver. Um, and great dialogue too. Game over, man! Game over! Now we got American History X, starring Edward Norton and Edward Furlong. Um, it's a great movie too. I love this movie. It's, uh, kind of disturbing and sometimes a little hard to watch, but, um... It's a, it's a great movie about racism. This guy, Edward Norton, goes to jail and figures out that racism is stupid and everything that he thought of in his life is stupid and everything that he thought prior to going to jail was stupid. And uh, it's a great movie. It's a great watch. Now we got American Hustle. David O. Russell film uh, starring all these awesome people. Bradley Cooper, Jennifer Lawrence, Jeremy Renner, Christian Bale, and Amy Adams. This is a great movie, and it's funny because first time I watched it in theaters, I, I liked it, I really did, I thought it was a great movie, but for some reason, each time I watched it, I appreciated it even more. Uh, the, I mean, the performances are outstanding, and I even liked the plot of the movie too, I thought the movie had a great ending as well. Um, I guess really the only flaw I have with this movie is that Jennifer Lawrence's character, she did great in the movie, she did awesome, I loved her. Uh, I just thought she was a little miscasted maybe, because she's supposed to play like a like a late 20s lady is going on her late 20s and she still looks like a 20 year old 
got American Psycho, uh, Christian Bale movie. He's fantastic in this movie. He is fantastic. It's a black, it's a black comedy. I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's like a black comedy. So if you don't really, some people don't like this movie because they don't really like get it. You know, they don't understand. It comes off as corny. Um, but you know, if you get what the movie is going for, it's a great, it's a great movie. My God, is that the ghost of Stonewall Jackson? Anchorman too. Uh, I love Anchorman. I love Anchorman too. I think they're both hilarious. I like the first one a little bit more, obviously, but uh, thought it was a funny movie. Gotta say, up next we got Argo, uh, directed by Ben Affleck, starring Ben Affleck. Uh, it's a it was a big surprise. This movie was. Uh, he did a great job with this movie. It feels very real. Like there's not one moment in this movie that I feel is actually a movie. It feels like a real thing that's happening, which it was. It was a real story, but the way he directed this movie, it made it feel very real. And Ben Affleck does a good job of making his movie feel very real. And like with Gone Baby Gone and The Town, he does a great job. Ben Affleck's a great director. Up next we got Babel, um, directed by Alejandro and Yuritu. Kind of the, one of those movies that have like four different stories and they all kind of come together in the end in some way. Uh, it's a good movie. I love it. Uh, I think he did a great job directing it. I don't give a shit about the fucking marmot, Walter. The Big Lebowski. This movie, I love this movie. I'm gonna go. I love this movie. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. But it's more than just a comedy. I mean, this movie. It's hard to even explain this movie and unless I just tell you to watch it, so... By the way, Jeff Bridges gives a great performance in this movie as the dude. I mean, the guy's gonna be known as the dude forever. Even when he's dead, they're gonna be like... They're not even gonna call him Jeff Bridges, they're gonna call him the dude. Now we got Black Swan, uh, directed by Darren Aronofsky, uh, starring Natalie Portman. This is a powerhouse film. I mean, this movie is directed so well, and Natalie Portman... Her performance in this movie was outstanding, and I'm glad she won the Oscar for it, because it's a well-deserved Oscar. All right, now we got the Boondock Saints. Um, you know, I didn't even know about this movie until like six months ago, until one of my co-workers told me to watch it, because he, he said it was like one of his favorite movies of all time. So I bought it for 10 bucks at Best Buy, gave it a watch, and uh, it's a good movie. Yeah, I thought Willem Dafoe was good in the movie. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this movie wasn't as good as I thought my friend thought it was. Yeah, uh, up next we got Bridesmaids, uh, starring Kristen Wiig and Rose Byrne and a few others, a lot of others actually. Um, it's an all-girl cast and, you know, of course I thought this movie was gonna be lame and corny and stupid, but it's not. It's fantastic. It's hilarious the whole way through. Something that both guys and girls can watch together and be happy. Alright, next we got Cabin Fever. You know, I feel like this is a really underrated horror film. Uh, you know, not a lot of people really talk about this film. And I think it's great. I mean, this movie really creeped me out. I mean, even now it still creeps me out. And it's, it's like a horror comedy, too. It has a lot of funny elements in it. I think it does a great job of kind of fusing those two elements together without detracting of the, the scary elements of the movie. I think it does a good job. If you haven't seen Cabin Fever, you should really check it out. Another Cabin movie we got coming up, Cabin in the Woods. This movie I saw in the theater with my girlfriend, and we both were very skeptic on it because it looks really cliche. But... It's not. It's the opposite of cliche, and I don't want to say any more about it because it's going to spoil it, so just go watch it. Carlito's Way is a great film, directed by Brian De Palma. Uh, it's a great film. Go watch it. If you haven't seen it yet, what the fuck? Alright, now we got Carnage. Uh, starring, uh, Jodie Foster, Kate Winslet, John C. Riley, and Christoph Waltz. This movie is awesome, and I didn't even hear about this movie. I never even heard about it, actually. It was on HBO one day, and I flipped it on, and it's great. It was based on a play. It takes, all the movie takes place in an apartment, so, but it's only an hour long. An hour and ten minutes long, I believe. But, uh, it's a good movie. The dialogue is so well written. Now we got Catch Me If You Can. Uh, Steven Spielberg film starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks, one of my two favorite actors. I love this movie. It's it's a great movie. I mean, I can watch this movie over and over and over again, and it never gets old. Alright, next we got Children of Men. 
uh, directed by Alfonso Cuaron, uh, starring Clive Owen and Julian Moore. This movie's awesome, guys. This is, God, I want to say top, top ten of my movies, of my, one of my favorite movies. Um, some of the scenes in this movie, Alfonso Cuaron is a master at just one-shot sequences. I mean, there's a few one-shot sequences in this movie that'll really blow your mind. So if you've never seen this movie, please check it out. Now it's Clerks. Clerks is great. I love this film. I thought the dialogue that was written for it was fantastic. Written by Kevin Smith and directed by Kevin Smith. He did a great job with this movie. This was his first movie. It was a very low-budget movie that he decided to direct in his actual store, like a uh, little convenience store that he worked in. And it's, it's great. I love this movie. A Clockwork Orange. This is probably my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, bold statement, but right now it's my number one. It's been my number one for like a year and a half. This movie is incredible in, in every aspect. I mean, Stanley Kubrick is a genius. This movie, there's not a movie like this movie. You're, you're not going to be able to find another movie that is like this movie, I guarantee you that. The music is fantastic, it's ironic, it's beautiful. Malcolm McDowell gives an iconic performance in this movie and it's one of the best performances by an actor ever. Not the best ever in the world, but definitely up there. Next we got The Conjuring, uh, directed by James Wan. Uh, it's a creepy movie. The Conjuring really freaked me out and I thought it was gonna be crap too and it wasn't, it creeped me out. So, good job Conjuring. Who? What? What's happening? Where am I? Who am I? What's going on, guys? Hey! What? Contraband starring. <laughs> Contraband starring Mark Wahlberg. Uh, funny story about how I got this movie. My brother was in a weird, uh, kind of, uh, he had a weird phase going on with Mark Wahlberg action flicks at one point. And he was just like, Carlos, we gotta go out and find a... Mark Wahlberg action flick. I'm craving it. I'm like, okay, man. So he went out, and this was the most recent one that was out, and he bought it. He didn't care if it was $20. <laughs> he went and bought it. We watched it, and uh, it was all right. I enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, I'm not telling you to go out and see it immediately. I guess if it's on TV one day, you know, flip it on. You'll probably enjoy it. Next, we got Coraline. Uh, yeah, Coraline's great. It's a great film. The art in it is fantastic. The way it was crafted is fantastic. The story is fantastic. It's creepy too. I mean, the first time I watched this movie, still when I watched this movie, it creeps me out. Like the the uh, Coraline's parents with the buttons for eyes and everything, and the whole world where kind of people just have buttons for eyes. It's a creepy concept, and it still gets me today. Now we got Cowboy Bebop the movie. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I've only seen like half of this movie. Like, I didn't get to finish it, but uh, and I really haven't seen the anime too much. I've seen a couple episodes, but I really want to get into it. I really want to watch the anime, and I really want to watch all this movie because I heard it's fantastic. And up next, we got The Crow. Uh, Brandon Lee stars in it. This is obviously the movie that he died and got shot, I believe. I like this movie. I don't think it's fantastic. Um, for some people, they think it's a fantastic film. They think it's a masterpiece. Uh, I think it's a good movie. Um, I guess I just didn't get into it as much as they did. It's a really good, like, gothic tale. Hey, I'm Matthew McConaughey. I'm gonna go star in a movie and win an Oscar for playing an AIDS patient. Dallas Buyers Club. This movie is awesome. Like, I gotta drive, like, 40 minutes away just so I can go see this movie. And it was well worth it. It's a great movie. I mean... Uh, Jean-Marc Vallée, I didn't even hear about the director until this movie came out, and he did a great job. So did the performances by Jared Leto and Matthew McConaughey. They both won Oscars. Um, Jared Leto definitely should have won the Oscar. Matthew McConaughey, I'm not mad that he won the Oscar. I just felt like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio for The Wolf of Wall Street should have won that Oscar, because I felt like it was more deserving. But uh, it's the Academy. What you gonna do? Ah, what you gonna do? Alright, up next we got The Dark Knight Rises. Uh... Heath Ledger, Christian Bale. You know, I don't really like a lot of these Batman movies. A lot of people love them. They love Christopher Nolan. They love all three movies. I wasn't a big fan. I'm sorry. You know, you can kill me if you want. You can hate me if you want. 
I wasn't a big fan of the Batman flicks, but uh, I specifically got the Dark Knight just because I feel Heath Ledger gave this movie his all, and I mean literally his all, obviously. But um, this is probably his best performance, in my opinion. Uh. <laughs> and um, yeah. Squeal like a pig, boy. Deliverance. Uh, <laughs> if you've never seen Deliverance or know what's in this movie or what happens in this movie. Watch it and then find out what happens in the movie. Then we got Martin Scorsese film, The Departed. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Mark Wahlberg, Matt Damon, Jack Nicholson. Great cast, obviously. Uh, one of my favorite Martin Scorsese films. I, it's really hard for me to pick a favorite Martin Scorsese film. I don't really know because I love almost all of his movies. Uh, it's a great film and it deserved every Oscar it won. Now, nah, boy, you are clever. But if I were to take this hammer here, bash in your skull with it, you would have the same three dimples as old Ben. Django Unchained. I love, love this movie. I mean, Quentin Tarantino is a master. This guy created a western where a black guy gets free from slavery and whips white people. That's awesome! And it's filled with all the Tarantino things that you love with the blood and the language and the animated like things that happen in the movie. I mean, this movie's great. I mean, every performance in this movie is, without a doubt, to the T. Samuel L. Jackson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Christoph Waltz, Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx was good. I'm not gonna say he was outstanding, but his character for what he did, it was pretty good. Next we got Don John. Uh, first directed film by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He's starring in it. He has uh, Scarlett Johansson and Julian Moore in it. Uh, I loved this movie. I dug the hell out of this movie, I gotta say. This really dives into how relationships really are, and it's very honest to the core the whole way through. And not one time that I feel like this was like one-sided or it was trying to appeal to a certain audience. I mean, this movie was great. It was funny. It's truthful. Next we got Drive, starring Ryan Gosling, directed by Nicholas Winding Refn. This is also one of my favorite movies of all time. First time I watched it, I didn't, I liked it, but I didn't like it that much, but it was still in my head. Even though I didn't dig it like crazy, it was still in my head and I still had like a yearning to watch it. And with the second viewing, I was just in love with it. The second viewing, I was totally in love with this movie. I mean, it was, it was really infatuated with it. Um, everything about it, the music, the editing is like done perfectly. Check out Drive. Next we got End of Watch with Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena. Uh, good movie. Writer, director of Training Day. Did a good job. It's very intense. Now we got Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Starring Jim Carrey, Kate Winslet, Mark Ruffalo, Kristen Dunst. And uh, it's a wonderful cast and this is a wonderful movie. It's very trippy. It's very dreamlike. This movie really makes you feel like you're inside the mind of somebody. It's probably the closest movie I've seen it done so well. Now we got Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness. Now, all three of these movie, movies are fantastic. I love all of these movies. Uh, probably my favorite is Evil Dead 2, just because, I don't know, it just, it just comes out at you more, I think, and it's hilarious. All right, now we got Fantasia, uh, earlier Disney film. Um, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, I'm going to be honest, but I remember it was a great animated extravaganza. All right, up next we got Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas with Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro. Uh, probably one of the trippiest movies I've seen so far. Yeah. Great movie, great performance by Johnny Depp. He does a great job. All right, now we got The Fighter, um, starring Christian Bale, Mark Wahlberg, directed by David O. Russell. Uh, I mean, Christian Bale. This guy is like the master of weight loss and gain. I mean, if you've seen American Hustle, you've seen how much pounds he 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 got on that, and then you see this, and he looks like a freaking crack addict. Literally, a crack addict. Number one rule of Fight Club: Don't talk about Fight Club. 
Second rule of Fight Club. Don't talk about Fight Club. Fight Club. Uh, <laughs> Fight Club is a great movie directed by David Fincher. Uh, probably, uh, it's my favorite David Fincher film. I'm going to go ahead and say that. I like it better than Zodiac. And I watched this when I was a little younger, so it was kind of a little nostalgic to me too. But uh, great performances all around too. Great movie. Got from Paris with Love, starring John Travolta and some other guy. But uh, it's a good movie. I didn't buy this movie, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I think my brother did, or my dad did. But uh, I watched it, and it wasn't that bad, so uh, I'm not really ashamed to have it on Blu-ray. If that says anything. What is this, Private Pile? What is this? A jelly donut. A jelly donut?! Full Metal Jacket, guys. This movie is one of the best military movies and war movies I've ever seen. Especially the first half, I mean, this is one of the only war films I've seen really go into detail of how they brainwash these guys and how they just turn them into cold-blooded killers with no emotion or no feeling until they just basically torture them. Hunger Games catching fire. Um, I'm gonna be honest, when I watched this in the movie theater, I liked it a lot. And then I bought it on Blu-ray because it was on sale and then I popped it in and I watched it again. And uh, it's okay. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the romance and drama stuff that was happening between Jennifer Lawrence and Liam Hemsworth. And I know that was weird stuff going on romantically. <laughs> now we got Goodwill Hunting with Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, which he both wrote this movie, and uh, Robin Williams. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. He did a great job in this movie. He definitely deserved to win that Oscar for that movie. He played like uh, Matt Damon's therapist in this movie and. Boy, he really sold his role, like, entirely. Sold it. Now we got Gravity, uh, also directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Uh, this movie is also full of uh, one-shot sequences that are beautifully crafted. I saw this movie in 3D in the theaters, and I'm always going to remember that. It was one of the greatest film theater experiences I've ever had in my life, so thank you. Now we got Gatsby, the great Gatsby. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, the first time I watched this movie in theaters, I didn't like it that much. I thought it was okay, I thought it was a little too long, and I thought it took way too long to show Leonardo DiCaprio's character in the movie. But I bought it, and I watched it again, and I dug it way more the second time. I love the style of it, I think Baz Luhrmann did a great job with it. Um, the good thing about the movie, it keeps its style, it's very consistent throughout the movie. It doesn't stop with its style, which is very important for a film. They got the great mouse detective. I got mean, The Great Mouse Detective. This movie is awesome. I mean, I love this movie. It was, I was so young, I don't even remember how old I was when this, when I watched this film, but this film is great. It's just classic Disney. I love it. Not at the table, Carlos. Yeah. Hangover. Yeah, what a great movie. My name's Carlos. I got to hear everybody tell me not at the table, Carlos, for years because of this movie. I, but in all honesty, I, I, I love this movie. It's fantastic. It's hilarious. Till this day, I can watch it, and I will consistently laugh all the way through as if I never watched it in the first place. All three Harold and Kumar movies. These movies are awesome. I love these movies. I dig these movies. I find them hilarious every single time I watch them. They're great stoner comedies. All of them. And uh, I just think uh, Kumar and Harold, I mean, that's one of the greatest pairs in chemistry and comedy history, in my opinion. I mean, they do so well in all three movies. They really don't skip a beat. We've got another stoner comedy. High School with Adrian Brody, Matt Bush, and Sean Marquette. You know, a lot of people don't even know about this movie. They never even heard of this movie. They have no idea this movie even came out. And uh, I watched it in theaters, on accident actually, and I thought it was hilarious. Is it a good movie? No. Is it funny? Yeah. This movie is hilarious. Not to mention Adrian Brody is downright idiotic in this movie. This guy is crazy in this movie, but I love it. He did great in this movie. I'm glad he participated in a small movie like this. It's awesome. Cool, cool, beans, beans, cool, beans, cool, cool, beans, beans. Hot Rod. Whew. I saw this movie a while back, and I laughed really hard the first time I saw it, and I keep laughing every single time that I see this movie. I don't care how stupid it is, 
It makes me laugh. That's it. We got Martin Scorsese film Hugo. And uh, I'm sad to say this, but I have this movie and I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched it. I'm gonna watch it though. We got I Spit on Your Grave. Uh, to be honest, I don't really like this movie that much. Uh, I think it's definitely different. But, um, I don't know. I bought it because it was on sale uh, at Best Buy and I heard a lot of things about it. I heard a lot of things about the remake too. But I figured I'd buy the original. And, I mean, it's not a bad movie. It's just, uh, I would never just say, hey, let's all watch I Spit on Your Grave, guys. It's they're gonna do one thing and one thing only. Killing Nazis. Yeah. Inglorious bastards. Tiptoe through the road and by the window of the grill I'm Insidious. Everybody knows now because of Insidious, when you hear that song, you're about to shit yourself. Now we got Interview with a Vampire. Uh, Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. Wow, Kristen Dunst in this movie. She probably impressed me the most out of anybody. <laughs> Knocked up. Uh, funny ass movie. Wow, Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown is a Tarantino film. It's probably my least favorite of Tarantino's films. But that's not saying anything because I love it. I love this movie. It's fantastic. That is one big pile of shit. Jurassic Park. God, I love this movie. I grew up in this movie. I saw this movie a billion times when I was a kid. I was terrified of it, but I couldn't get enough of it. I mean, it was great. The effects still hold up today magnificently. Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say, guys, this movie was in a bin for $4.99 at Best Buy, and my friend told me that it was funny as hell. So I took his word for it, and uh, it's okay. It's not funny as hell. It's got its moments, but uh, Kevin Smith can do a lot better. We got Kill Bill 1 and 2. I mean, another great Tarantino film. I was going to call them a film because they're, it's volume 1 and volume 2. I'm just going to consider them in the same thing. Uma Thurman kicks ass, and I wish Uma Thurman was in more movies that I cared about because this is really probably the only movie that I care that she's in besides Pulp Fiction but she did a great job with it, she's very talented and I wish she would do more things got Lovely Bones um, my girlfriend wanted to watch this movie with me it's it's a good movie I mean, the I like the first half better than the second half of this movie uh, the first half has really got some great scenes, some intense chilling scenes but you know, kind of towards the end I think it gets a little uh, crazy we got the Matrix trilogy here. Um, I've only seen the first Matrix. I'm gonna go ahead and say that uh, it's a great movie. I mean, who hasn't seen the Matrix? I'm gonna go ahead and make fun of myself because I actually haven't seen the Matrix until like three months ago. I know, I know, but it's great. I loved it, and um, it's the Matrix. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 I right before Christmas. This is a classic. I grew also grew up with this movie. I watched it a billion times. I was also scared of it, but I kept wanting to watch it. And uh, Tim Burton, man, Tim fucking Burton. Stelio, Stelio, canto, Stelio. No country for old men. This movie is awesome. Coen Brothers film. Uh, besides The Big Lebowski, I think this is my favorite. I think I like it a little bit more than Fargo. We got <laughs> Observe and Report. You're probably wondering why I own this movie. Um, well, again, uh, I think my brother bought it at Blockbuster one day. Really, I don't hate this movie. I think it's funny, actually. I mean, it has some funny-ass moments. Uh, I think it gets a little too dark. Um, for no reason, kind of. But, I mean, other than that, I thought it was funny. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go ahead and ask you to come in on Sunday, too. Office Space. One of the greater comedies ever made. I think it was made in 1999. 
Um, this movie was really under the radar for a very long time. People didn't even know what this movie was, and then it became a cult classic all of a sudden, and now everybody knows Office Space. Wanna fight? Only God forgives. I freaking love this movie, and it's funny because a lot of people downright hate this movie. They hate it, but I'm sorry, this movie is awesome. If you can't see the brilliance in this movie, Please go back and watch it. Try to let it sink in a little bit before you judge it because this movie's awesome. This movie is great. The score, the visual. Christian Scott Thomas in this movie, damn. Great. Brian Gosling's a great, subtle actor. I love this movie. I can't stop thinking about this movie. The Orphanage. Uh, Guillermo del Toro um, produced it. I thought he directed it for a very long time, but no, he just produced it. This is a really good horror thriller. And it's a foreign language film, so if you got a problem with subtitles, you got a problem. Uh, yeah, they actually left you a little note here. It says, thanks for the f shack." Signed by Dirty Mike and the Boys. The Other Guys. I love The Other Guys. I love this movie. It's hilarious. Every second of this movie is hilarious. Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell together. It just works. It really does. Got Pacific Rim. Uh... Very surprising movie to me. I thought this movie was gonna be trash when I saw the trailer. And then I saw that it was getting positive reviews and I was like, wow, really? So I went to the movies and I watched it and boy, this is a this is a great movie. Hey, Paul. Um movie Seth Rogen is the alien, uh Nick Frost is in it, Simon Pegg, there's people that are in Shaun of the Dead. Um this movie is awesome. I liked it a lot. Um, it's not better than Shaun of the Dead or any of the Cornetto trilogy stuff, but um, I thought it was a decent movie. Perks of Being a Wallflower. This movie is awesome. I mean, this movie is directed so beautifully. And the guy that wrote the book also directed the movie, so kudos. Oh, dude, what's that on your face? Uh, it's a cold sore. Never happened before, so I started to cry. Pineapple Express. This movie is hilarious. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. Seth Rogen and James Franco together in this movie are fantastic. They are fantastic. Every line in this movie, I swear, makes me gut bust in laughter. This is just a classic for me, literally. I haven't seen it in a while, but I am dying to watch it again. Now, this is a very underrated movie that I think everybody should give some attention to and give it a watch. Place Beyond the Pines. This movie is very underlooked and underrated. I mean, Ryan Gosling, Eva Mendez, Bradley Cooper, they give some powerhouse performances in this movie, and this movie itself is a powerhouse movie. The storytelling in this movie is so unique, and I really haven't seen filmmakers you know, in this day and age go out and do that. Very emotional, powerful movie, and if you never heard of it, never seen it, please check it out. You'll be very impressed with it. Alright, next we have a Robert Rodriguez film, and it's the only Robert Rodriguez film that I will probably ever own. Planet Terror. Um, yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> this movie is retarded, really. It's crazy, but I saw it for what it was, and for some reason I liked it. Alright, next we have Ponyo. Uh, Miyazaki film. Great film, guys. Great film. Um, you know, some people think it's lacking with its story and it's too childish, but I'm fine with it, really. I enjoyed the heck out of this movie. Every minute of this movie was engaging, and the art, man, Miyazaki and his art, people who already know who Hayao Miyazaki is, you know he delivers every single time he makes a film. Now we got Primal Fear with Edward Norton and Richard Gere. Uh, it's a good movie. It's a great lawyer movie with a crazy twist in the end. I'm not going to spoil that for you, but watch it and you're going to be mind fucked. Next we have a, a little, I think it's a little underlooked movie. Prisoners. Prisoners is awesome. This movie, Hugh Jackman, Jake Gyllenhaal, they give great performances in this movie. And it's funny because I did not want to watch this movie when I saw the trailer. I didn't care for it. What did the movie saw it anyway? Great movie, guys. Great movie. But if you have kids, small, if you have small kids, uh, probably don't watch. He hid the watch in the only place that he knew he could hide it. His ass. Pulp Fiction. Oh God, it's hard for me to say this, but this probably is my favorite Tarantino film. And I know you're probably like, really, you're going to pick Pulp Fiction as your favorite Tarantino film? Yeah, I'm sorry. I still gotta give it to the movie. It's great, and this movie is like almost all talking, and it's crazy 
how a person can write a movie with nothing but talking in it and it is more engaging than any Marvel movie that's ever came out. And now we got The Raid and The Raid 2. These are crazily underlooked, underrated action fight films. I mean, these, the fight sequences in, this, in these movies, you're not going to find any better anywhere else. I'm telling you, this beats every American action film that I've ever seen. I mean, their choreography in this movie is fantastic. And um, for any action buff, if you just dig action films, The Raid and The Raid 2 will highly impress you, even though I think The Raid 2 is a little better than the first. Um, apparently, I have Resident Evil Degeneration. Uh, I guess my brother got this movie. Uh, at uh, Blockbuster, obviously. Uh, I haven't seen it, so I can't talk about it. I'm sorry. Now we got Reservoir Dogs, the first fully Tarantino film that he wrote it and directed and everything was him. Reservoir Dogs is a great film. This movie is awesome. I mean, this guy knows how to make a low-budget movie awesomely. I mean, half, more than half of this movie takes place in a warehouse. And it is so engaging. This movie is engaging in every single way possible. He's just a good writer. Quentin Tarantino is like the best writer that I can think of in, in, in the film industry right now. <laughs> Requiem for a Dream. Oh my god, I saw this film recently and boy, it still stuck with me. I love this movie. Darren Aronofsky directed this movie. This is probably my favorite Darren Aronofsky film. I like it better than Black Swan. I like it better than Pi. This is a great movie, guys. This is a great movie about drugs. And this, basically, if you don't want your kids to ever do drugs, just show them this movie. That's it. All right, now we got Rise of the Planet of the Apes with James Franco. Uh, it's a great movie. I mean, it's a Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I'm sure everybody has seen this movie. Um, God, the effects were incredible. Uh, they're still incredible. Uh, I just thought they really sold the whole apes taking over when I first saw the trailer. I was like, there's no way they're going to sell me the fact that apes are going to take over. They sold it. They got me. It's great. Now we got the best Robin Hood movie ever made, and that is Robin Hood Men in Tights. <laughs> so, wow. Uh, yeah. Mel Brooks film. Um, I did not even know this movie existed until five months ago with my girlfriend and we saw it in a bin and this really she told me that she saw this when she was a kid and that was hilarious and I was like okay so I bought it and it's pretty funny yeah it's corny sometimes but uh it really did make me laugh at some points so I'm not ashamed to have this on Blu-ray either her womb is so polluted I can't even have a fucking baby with her man Scarface oh my god probably best Al Pacino performance ever even more than The Godfather I love this movie. I was obsessed with this movie for like five months. Like, that's all I could talk about was Scarface, 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 Scarface. I love this movie. It's fantastic. It's definitely one of my favorites as well. Did you know that Pac-Man was originally puck Band, but then they decided to change it back to Pac-Man because they were scared they were going to scribble the P out and put an F there? You know, so it would spell out Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. This is a movie directed by Edgar Wright. Man, he knows how to make an anime game-like movie, and people suck at making games into movies, this guy did it right. And it's not even based on a game, but if a, if a movie that was good, that was based on a game, this is what it would it would look like. This movie is fantastic, and it proves that you can make a movie like a manga, and you can make a movie like a game, then still be awesome. This movie is great. Michael Sarah's best performance, in my opinion. Great movie. Now we got The Shawshank Redemption. Uh, it's a Shawshank Redemption. I gotta have it. And that's it. Here's Johnny! Shining. This is a great freaking movie, guys. The Shining is awesome. I dig this movie so much. Probably one of the best horror films, best psychological films ever made. Even today, people can't really decipher the meaning to this movie. There's so many different theories about what this movie is really about. We got another Martin Scorsese film, Shutter Island. Uh, a lot of some people had problems with this movie, you know, they didn't like the ending, they didn't like a lot of things in this movie, but I thought it was awesome. I loved it. I love every second of it. Now next we have my favorite David O. Russell film, and that is Silver Linings Playbook. 
Uh, Bradley Cooper, Jennifer Lawrence, they both did great in this movie. Um, yeah. I can't really talk too much about this movie without spoiling a lot of its... Can't really talk about this movie too much without spoiling it a little bit, but uh, Robert De Niro is also in this movie, and he was a great job. He does a great job, and uh, yeah, great movie. I see dead people. Sixth Sense, how can you not own this movie? This movie is a classic, and it's awesome. When you have somebody who's never seen this movie before, and they have no idea what the twist is in the end, you show them this, you just get to see their mind get raped like right in front of you, and it's fantastic. Next we got Smoking Aces. Um, I watched this when I was younger, and I thought it was awesome, and then I bought it, and I watched it again, and uh, I didn't like it very much. South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. Oh my god, this movie is hilarious. This movie, South Park in general, is hilarious. I love that show. I love this movie. Trey Parker, Matt Stone, keep doing what you're doing, guys. South Park is awesome. Oh god, here we go. I have Spring Breakers. I really thought this movie was going to be okay or good because it got some positive reviews. And it was on sale for 10 bucks at Best Buy, and I said, hey, why not? I like James Franco. I bought it, and God, I hate this movie. I hate it. This is awful. I hate it. And I like art films, too. I am in love with art films, but this movie is repetitive. It's nasty. It's boring. It doesn't make sense. It's... I hate this movie, and I understand what they're trying to say about, you know, our generation and how we act now and days. I don't, it's, it's crap guys, it's crap. It, you know what, anybody wants this movie, I will give it to you, because I don't even want it anymore, so. Uh, or should I just burn it? Should I, should I burn it? You know what, that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn it. I'll make a video of me burning this, and y'all can watch it. We have Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. Great, great movies here. I mean, I don't even, I don't even have to talk about it, but no, I do not own the prequels. Why in the hell would I own the prequels? I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy it. No matter how much I like Star Wars, I'm not going to buy the prequels. I'm sorry, George Lucas, you suck. I'm going to go upstairs, I'm going to go put my nutsack on your drum set, Step Brothers. Man, this movie is hilarious. I have, This movie has not gotten old to me. It's funny as hell, it's funny as hell, and it's funny as hell. So that's why I have it. McLove is the most commonly used name on Earth. Read a fucking book for once. Super bad. Oh my god, this movie is so funny. This is probably the funniest Jonah Hill movie that is out there. This movie is so funny. Each time I watch it, it gets even funnier. Just the fact that I get to hear him say these ridiculous things every time. This movie is funny, and I actually feel like watching it now, because I haven't seen it in a while. I'm going to watch it later. We have Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, directed by Tim Burton. And this is just a wonderful movie. It's great. It's the R-rated Tim Burton musical. Dark musical, violent musical. It's great. It's great. For not first, you're last. Talladega Nights, Will Ferrell, and other other people that are also hilarious. It's a great Adam McKay film. It's funny as Nikes, and that's why I have it. You talking to me? You talking to me? Taxi Driver. Whew. This is a fantastic film, one of Martin Scorsese's earlier films. Some people consider this his best film. I don't think it's his best film in my opinion. I think it is a great film though. It's definitely up there. Um, it's a great movie. Robert De Niro gives a iconic performance in this movie. I mean, iconic. Now we got Ted, directed by Seth MacFarlane. The movie is hilarious too. I love it. It's funny. As fuck. We have Ninja Turtles 1, 2, and 3, the live action films. Um, yes, I have the third one. It came in the pack, but uh, and I actually wanted it a little bit. And y'all can kill me if you want, because I know the third one sucks, but I grew up with it, and I it is nostalgic to me in every way possible, so I get nostalgia from it. What, what do you want from me? If you have a milkshake, I have a milkshake. 
Here's my straw, watch it. There will be blood. This is also one of my favorite movies of all time. Everything about this movie, the score, the acting, the story, the directing. Daniel Day Lewis plays a great character and this is one of the best performances by an actor almost ever. Next we have John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, crazy, crazy. If you're wondering why it's chewed up, it's because my freaking dog chewed it up one day and uh, I put two pieces of tape on it and now it's great. Anyway, um, crazy movie. I mean, I know it's a little slow at first, but it picks up and boy does it deliver. Really? So you guys are kicking me off the island? I made breakfast for you guys. This is the end. This movie is hilarious. A lot of people don't like it. Whatever. This movie makes me laugh non-stop. There's not a, mo a moment in this movie where I feel like it is dull. Except maybe the end. You know, near the end it gets a little too silly and outrageous. But uh, other than that, it's funny. It's funny as hell. Literally. We have another Ben Affleck film, The Town. This movie's great. I think this one, he directed this one after he did Gone Baby Gone. And this is a great movie. This movie is awesome. Uh, this is the extended cut. Uh, I didn't like the extended cut as much as I did as the original. But um, nevertheless, it's a great movie. Next I have Toy Story 3. And I know I don't have Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2. I'm such a bastard. I know. But... I'm sorry, sometimes I'm a cheap ass, and these animated Pixar movies cost a lot. I mean, just look at how much that one costs. Uh, yeah. Um, one day I'm just gonna go on Amazon and buy them. I know, I'm getting it for cheap on Amazon, but I will do it soon, and then I'll have all three. Yay! King Kong ain't got shit on me! Training day. Oh my god, great, great performance by both Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke. I feel like they both did great in this movie. Uh, directed by uh, David Ayer, I think is his name. Um, this is a great classic movie. If you haven't seen Training Day, you really need to get it on that. This is a thrilling, intense movie. Drink booty sweat, baby. Drink booty sweat. Topic Thunder. Oh my god. This is probably the best movie Ben Stiller has ever directed. I think he directed it, right? Uh, yeah. This is the best movie that he's ever directed. It's hilarious in every way. I love the message that this movie gives sometimes with about movies. This movie is about the film industry, believe it or not. It really is. Next we have a Quentin Tarantino screenplay directed by Tony Scott, and that is True Romance, starring Christian Slater. Uh, I thought it was, a, it was a good film. It was good. Um, I definitely probably would have liked it more if it was directed by Quentin Tarantino, but whatever. We got Under the Skin. I could not find this movie anywhere. I went to three different Walmarts. They only had the DVD. I went to Best Buy. They didn't have it at all. I went to Target. They only had the DVD for some reason. So I was like, okay. I guess I just got to buy it online. So I did. And now I have Under the Skin. And guys, this movie really is a great, great art film. I mean, this movie is fantastic. The visuals in this movie, the way it's directed, it's very Kubrick-like. And you don't get that nowadays. You really don't. Uh, Johansson, great performance by Johansson. I have much more respect for Johansson now just because she was in this movie. She does a lot of acting just with her facial expressions. She has to emote with just her face and truly that's what makes a great actress if you can uh, you can convey your feelings that you want to convey without even saying a word. Now we got V for Vendetta. Um, I just watched this movie not too long ago. And I thought it was fantastic. This movie is great. It's probably my favorite superhero movie ever. I'm not too into superhero movies that much anyway. So, this is great. I love government, rebellious movies. It's fantastic. And Natalie Portman was great too. I mean, that's a serious actress right there if you shave your head just for a movie. Especially for a woman. Damn. Wally. This movie's awesome, guys. Uh, great messages about our society and the way America is going. The Watch. I know you probably guys are like, wow, you guys, you do really have that movie, The Watch? Uh, yeah, I do, because I think it's actually funny. It is a little over the place sometimes, and sometimes it does uh, kind of miss. But I thought it was funny, and it was cheap, and uh, that's why I have it on Blu-ray. <laughs> Her name's going to be Julia Gulia. Don't you think that's funny? The Wedding Singer. 
This is one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies ever. I think I might like it even better than Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison, but uh, Wedding Singer, don't you miss Adam Sandler and how he was back in the day? I don't think he's horrible now. I still dig his movies somewhat, somewhat, but he was way, way funnier back then, in my opinion. Wall Street. This is probably, I'm going to go ahead and say it, this is my favorite Martin Scorsese film. That's right. I like it better than Goodfellas. I like it better than Casino. I like it better than King of Comedy. I like it better than Taxi Driver. I like it better than Departed. This movie is awesome. I love, love this movie. It's so great to have a director like Martin Scorsese and a great actor like Leonardo DiCaprio that still cares about film and still does what they want to do despite what everybody else is going to think. And that's what I love about Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese. All right, now I got year one uh, with Jack Black and Michael Sarah. And also, I know you guys are like, why the hell do you have that? Well, I'm sorry. I think Jack Black's funny and I think Michael Sarah's funny and that's why I have it. I have a Kevin Smith movie, Zack and Miri Make a Porno. A lot of people didn't like this movie. I thought it was funny. Uh, I thought Kevin Smith's writing in it was was not too bad. Uh, yeah. We have David Fincher film, Zodiac. Uh, wow, it's three hours long, but boy, this is a great mystery, uh, crime movie, drama, funny, um, disturbing. This movie is, is fantastic, you know, three hours go by like that to me, it really does. Next we have some combo packs that I didn't really know where to put, so I just put them in the end, so I'll start with the first one. We got The Green Mile and Forrest Gump, uh, both great movies. I don't gotta say much about them, you already know how great they are, so I'm just gonna shut up. Next I got a uh, quadruple Blu-ray pack, four different comedies, Wedding Crashers, Horrible Bosses, Hall Pass, and Dumb and Dumber. And I like all of them. I think they're all great, so it was 20 bucks, and uh, it was a good buy for me. Uh, Hall Pass is probably the least funniest to me, but I still think that movie's funny. And uh, Dumb and Dumber is probably my favorite. I can't wait for the second one to come out. Hopefully it's good. And last but not least, we have Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. I don't have The World's End yet. I really want to get The World's End, because I love that movie too. Um, these are both great, great movies. Shaun of the Dead is my favorite of the three. Hot Fuzz is nothing short of amazing. Uh, these are both great films, and Nick Frost and Simon Pegg, they just really know how to act together. The chemistry between them is phenomenal. And um, kudos to uh, Edgar Wright, he really knows how to direct a movie with these guys. He knows how to direct a movie, period. I can't wait for Ant-Man to come out, it's gonna be awesome. Well guys, that is all of my movies, and I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I hope you liked seeing all the movies that I own, and seeing what kind of movies that I'm into. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Like, share it if you want. Uh, tell your friends to watch it, even though they're probably not going to watch it anyway, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, that's all my Blu-rays. Thank you very much for watching this uh, video. All right, that is all my Blu-rays. Thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's a long video, so I appreciate for everybody that actually stayed through the whole video. And uh, there's a lot of other movies that I obviously still need to get that I would love to get. So um, as soon as my Blu-ray collection grows even more, I'll make another video showing all the Blu-rays I have. Thank you so much for watching this video.